My friends, it is time. I extend my hand, inviting you to step with me into fantasy. Release your hold on that which you know to be true, and let imagination rule for the next few hours. Some bad guys to kill, guys. Yeah, let me crack on. Alrighty. So first up, we have Typhon. All right, I will squeeze past a few of my allies here. Difficult terrain for each one of them. Get on back and cast. Make the skeletal hand appear to cast Chill Touch. Uh oh. Wait. <laughs> so this is just this is a spell attack, right? That is correct. It scrapes across his chest, but he seems to be somewhat resilient to this clawing attack, and he flexes his muscles, and you can see a black streak where the claws went across his skin, but does not appear to have done any damage. That was not enough to beat his AC. Got it. Next we have... Rim. Rim is going to step into Doran's space and take a shot and then step back out. All right. So there's we can go through all the rules of why that why you do that, but it is um, you have plenty of room to do that, so you can do that. Make your attack. That does not beat his AC. He dodges out of the way. It looks like he barely even broke a sweat doing it. <laughs> Next, we have Mortlock Van Tampur. Oh, oh, comes barreling through both Doran and Silas. Step out of the way as Massive Man comes, comes through, and I've lost his token underneath Silas. I've had to move you for a moment. Please excuse me. And he uses all of his movement to get to right in front of this man. Right. Silas. Right. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Was this a mistake? All right. I meant to say it earlier, and I will say it now. When you move into... Uh, close proximity to this man you feel the blood in your veins begin to heat and it's as if it's trying to push out of your skin your face becomes flush and you begin to sweat it's just how it feels you uh, are able to move where you wish to move if you want to go to that spot side. okay so um, at, at what point would I have been feeling that so I take one you step. would have been feeling it at that point. Here? Mm -hmm. Or directly adjacent? Uh, directly adjacent. Uh, five foot. Him. Well, then I'm going to continue next to him. Mm hmm And strike. All right. Roll for damage. Or roll your attack, please. Twenty. That is a hit. Roll your damage. You slash, and a thin red line appears on his back as he was able to dodge out of the way to avoid the killing blow. But you have damaged him. And I believe that'll be it for me. 
All right. Next, we have Doran. All right. I will <clears throat> move up next to Silas there. And uh, I am going to use... Next to What's Silas? Uh, yeah. I don't know if it updated yet, but... Uh, I'm going to use Hexblade's Curse on him as a bonus action, and then I will... Uh, Cast Booming Blade. Right. So you are, I, I can't see that you've moved, but you're standing right behind Silas there? Yeah, right behind Silas. All right. I don't, once it updates, there we go. There you go. All um, right. 17 to hit for 9. 17 to hit. That is a hit. Um, once again, the eyes flash red in his skull. He holds out his hand. And as the blade comes slashing down, it passes through him, doing no damage. All right. I assume it doesn't uh, apply booming blade then. Correct. All right. Okay. Uh, that's it for me. So wait. So the booming blade is on the sword until it's used. Uh, no, no, no. Okay. It, it procs on a hit, right? It, it procs yeah. on a hit, but yeah. does it? If you don't do it in that in that turn, does it proc then on the next? No, it does not. Okay, it's, it's so done. that is Dorn Falkren, Your turn. All right. Can you hear me? Again. Lovely. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and, with the dogs of war behind me, move in. <laughs> And then I'm going to go ahead and toll the dead on our bone-faced friend. And take a... <laughs> Whopping... Yeah, big old flick to the One. forehead with a yeah. Bong. Uh, it appears to have damaged him, but not much. Yeah. Yeah, but but did it? Did it? Let's see. All right, that is Rim. Uh, sorry, that was that was not Rim. That was Falkran. Next is the man with the death's head head. He faces you, Doran, and his eyes glow red, but this time the red seems to bore into your eyes, and you can feel the bloodlust of Ball creeping up your neck and into your brain, and it's almost more than you can bear. Roll a charisma save. Uh, no, excuse me, not a charisma, a... Uh, Oh, a wisdom save. Thank you. You failed. You are stunned until the uh, end of its of this fellow's next turn. All right. Then great. he uh, spins both of his daggers in his hands and attacks Mortlock Vanthor Thampor twice. He hits with both. Um, if you have vulnerability to something, it does double damage, correct? Correct. Uh, Bordog Van Tempur's throat is sliced in two places, and he reels back and falls into the onto the floor. He's got his hand around his neck, and he is bleeding out. Next, we have Persephone. Okay. Um, I'm going to move to here and attack him with my rapier. Mm -hmm. As you move to that spot, you feel, uh, as I um, described earlier, your blood begin to seethe and royal. It wants to leave your body to honor the god of murder. Thank 
Dang it. Um, that is enough. Yes. Okay. And can I perceive if I feel like it's hurting him as much as I think it should? Um, yeah. You, uh, make a scratch along his arm, and you see it, uh, nice, red, vibrant blood come pouring out of it. Okay. Uh, and then I'm gonna use my bonus action with my dagger. Ugh. Uh, He's able to dodge out of the way of your dagger. And his attention um, is now focused on you. Sean, is she directly mm. flanking me since I have already attacked? And she is directly across from me. That is correct. Actually, you have a plus one to that hit, which is enough. So he does take damage from your uh, dagger. We oh. just discovered his armor class. <laughs> no, we didn't. <laughs> we just discovered house rule number... What is that? Two? Number one. Number one. <laughs> house rule number one. House rule number one. Nicely done. Well, re well remembered, Silas. There's this guy named Sean that I play with. He's a, he's a tactics guy. Sometimes he's Shock. good at it. Sometimes he's not. Rim, your <laughs> turn. Ah, turn. No, it's not. Typhon. Typhon's turn. We're at the top of the order. All right. Well, um, it seems our new ally might need a bit of help. So I will go to combat medic mode here and try and patch up the spurts of blood upon his throat. Right. Do you have medicine kit? I do. Excellent. Uh, expend one use is now stabilized. Uh, you spend your turn uh, pouring some powdered mushrooms of some sort that act as a coagulant and stop the bleeding and you quickly wrap a bandage around his neck and it looks like he is going to survive at least for now. Great. That is your turn. I back Rim. up. <laughs> Very good. Rim, Rim steps back into the room and takes another shot. I'm afraid that's not enough, Rim. Damn it. Anything else? No, stay. All right. Now we have Mortlock Van Tampur, who would need to make a death saving throw, but he's been stabilized thanks to Typhon. Silas, you have plus one to your attack. I'm going to attack with my glaive. Uh, 12 plus one, unfortunately, is a 12. That is not enough to beat his armor class. Doran, you are stunned. Falkrin. I'm going to go ahead and move up to, to get into that, up, that spot there and get in on this beatdown. So I'm gonna pull out my Warhammer. And take a swing. This will be one-handed. Right, that is not enough to beat his armor. Anything else? Ah, curses. Uh, uh, point, he, he is, some, of his, some of these blows seem to deflect off of his skin as if he's wearing armor. Some of them he's able to dodge. Hmm. All right. Uh, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold fast and uh, stick it. Very good. The figure with the... Skull head turns his gaze on Silas. Silas, make a wisdom saving throw. And that is a 19. That is enough. Your blood begins to seethe and creep up your neck, but you were able to shake off the effects and it purples back down into your chest. He whirls and attacks Persephone twice. One of the hits goes wide, but the other one does not. Persephone, take 13 points of piercing damage. Oh, damn. Say that number again. 13. The slice cuts across to your arm, and at first you think, oh, I'm all right. But you look down, and you see blood bursting for it scattering against the wall. Some of it gets on Falkrin. It's as if your blood is rushing out of your veins. 
Next we have Persephone. Huh. Um Man, okay. I'm sorry, my roll 20 just went away. Oh, well. The screen has gone blurry once a moment. Ah, the technology. It allows us to do so much. So much uh, the way that disengage works is I can take my action to move away without getting... An attack um, of opportunity. That is correct. And then could I still use a bonus action to take a healing potion, or is that not how that works? Uh, yes, that is how that works. Okay. So I'm going to <clears throat> step back to here. But you, you, <coughs> or, um, you, you use your action to disengage. You move there. Mm -hmm. As you step here, uh, let me ping it for you. As you step here, your eyes can't help but travel to the statue of Bane. That is oh, no. You. And you hear a voice in your head. Kneel before the tyrant of power. Make a charisma saving throw. That is a fail. Damn. You ah. fall to your knees before the god of conquest in this space. You are on your knees. You cannot uh, take reactions or actions. And you okay. will be there. You will be there until the end of your next turn when you can make another saving throw to see if you are able to shake off the effects. Okay. Typhon. Very good. Um, I'm going to move to this spot. And seeing things are not going very well, he seems to be very agile. I will do my best to um, sort of wave my hands in his face, cause a bit of magical sparks to leap from my hands. And I will look to my allies and say, strike true and strike now, and use the help action. Very good. Who are you helping? Just in the next person to attack? Yes. All right. Well, that would be Rim. Rim, you have advantage. All right. I will, uh, I will take another shot. Uh, the 19 hits. Uh, the arrow comes streaking forward, and it strikes right in the chest plate. And he looks down, and he looks up, and his eyes go red again. The arrow bursts into flame and falls down. Burnt. There is no wound. Um, I call out at Silas. Silas fell the statue. All right, uh, that is your turn. Mortlock Van Thumpur continues to be unconscious. Silas, you have a plus one to an attack as you are directly flanking with Typhon. Uh, right, and I've been given instructions to take down the statue. Um, how large is that statue? Uh, which statue are you the referring statue to? Statue of Bane. The statue of Bane is um, they're six feet tall. They appear to be made of painted wood. Painted wood. And each of them stand on top of a block of redstone, making it looking much taller than it actually is. Okay, then I'm going to be a good fellow and using my reach stab the statue alright hmm what's an AC for a non-moving object I'm going to call it uh, an AC of 9 because of its hardness Uh, you were able to hit it. <laughs> Roll damage. 
Uh, you are able to uh, greatly damage the statue. You are able to uh, knock a, a piece of the uh, wood off, and the uh, the spear it is holding clatters to the ground uh, with a metallic clink. The spear appears to be uh, real. Okay, and with that, I'm also going to use a bonus action. Um... Wrathful Smite, which does not take effect yet. Right. Next attack. Thank you. Done. You got it. Done. That is Silas done. Doran, your turn. Uh, snapping out of it, I am <laughs> going to cast a very similar spell that probably just looks aesthetically different in some way. Uh, Wrathful Smite, and then I'm going to take an attack. And, yeah, just an attack. Fifteen. That is uh, a hit. Plus... Okay, cool. Um, for nine slashing, and then a... another five for the smite. That did a significant amount of damage. This man. <laughs> he looks and... up at you, and if the skull has no expression, but he is glaring at you all the same. Um, then he has to take a wisdom saving throw or be frightened of me. All right. These Bane followers, they don't uh, seem to frighten easily, unfortunately. Doesn't yeah. appear to be a follower of Bane, based on what you've seen the others. I know, uh, however, it looks like it's did working. Make, does, it does look like he say, made his save, however. Mm. All right, this guy looks like a murder dude. Let's say a ball. Yeah. Um, so that is Doran Dunn. Falkron. Fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and swing away with that war hammer, one-handed. I'm afraid that does not succeed. Curses. His turn. He turns back to you, Doran, and m forces you to make another wisdom save or be stunned. Oh, great. Well done. The blood attempts to rush into your head, but you're able to shake it off. And it As, I've seen effect. it before. Right. <laughs> he whirls back and attacks Persephone, who has no way of defending herself. Persephone, you take 14 points of piercing damage. Right. Wow. I am un definitely a villain. Persephone, for Persephone falls. He sees that. It looks like he's going to go in for the kill, but at the last second reverses and stabs Typhon. <laughs> Rolling a natural one. So, uh, Typhon, you were so uh, shocked by Persephone falling that you stepped back briefly and his uh, blade went wide as it curved around. That is his turn. Persephone, make a death saving throw, please. Um, where do I do that on my D&D Beyond sheet? Hmm... I'm not looking at a sheet at the moment. When you have zero hit points, there should be an option. Oh, I, did, I didn't know if that I should be... I was keeping track of that manually, so I just put it down to zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, yes. Um, it should be right in the middle. Once you're at zero, there's a little red die between the failures and success. Got it. That is a failure. You take Ooh. a step towards... The Great Beyond. Yeesh. Typhon. You, my, you mistake my agility for compassion. However, I will kneel down and bandage Miss Persephone to stabilize her at the, for the moment. So we the, may uh, continue to fight this. You're using another uh, charge from your medicine kit? Indeed. All right. Persephone, much as Bortlock was dealt with a moment ago, you are stabilized. Zero hit points. Zero. Great. Thank you. 
Rim. Another shot. I'm sorry, that does not work. Uh, Ignore the second one. Is, <laughs> well, why would you? Oh, why would you roll the second one? No, it was an itchy trigger finger. Itchy trigger finger, very good. Well, it's a much better roll, but unfortunately, the first Alas. one stands. Yes. Alas, and a lack. Orlok Van Vampura continues to be unconscious. He's getting very good at it. Silas, your turn. Right, I'm going to... Uh, seeing... Uh, the, the, you said the spear fell from the statue. Did I see it make any difference in Persephone's status? Um, you did not uh, see anything. Um, however, uh, she fell before she was able to take any action. So, okay. possible it might have worked. Uh, hey. um, I'm gonna have to go combat medic myself. Uh, did well? Did Typhon? stabilize her? Did, is she still on death yeah, door, so to speak? She's still on... She she's is fine. stabilized. She is okay. She is unconscious at zero hit point. Want to make sure. However, you will not get you will not get the plus one bonus uh, because Typhon is not threatening while he is uh, stabilizing. That's fine. I'm just going to do a straight attack. Uh, what's the... How does that rule work now? If... Uh, yeah, if you are directly across from an ally, you uh, you get a plus one to your attack. However, I'm ruling that since you didn't spend your turn trying to attack him, you instead spent it... Um, an, uh, an engaged ally. Yes, exactly. Makes sense? But I think 17 hits. You're correct. A 17 does hit. Let's see that paladin damage! Well, it's five, and when I originally invoked Wrathful Smite, it rolled a four. So it's All right. Uh, so that's nine. Nine total points. Uh, five magic, four psychic. Um, five magic. Oh yeah, I've got a moon touched elven glaive. Magic. Well, does it do? Does it do slashing, piercing? It's slashing, but it's magic. Slashing. That five slashing is what I need to hear. That's. If he, if he had resistance to magic, to anything other than magic, then you would be correct. That would do damage. I was just calling the type of damage, just in case it was different, Sean. Because Wrathful being psychic always blows my mind. That is strange. Uh, anyway, for another time. Um, Doran. Right. Uh, just another attack, I think. And... Sure, booming blade. Um, so 19 to hit for 10 slashing. That hit. And he's kind of wreathed in that in that energy. All right. Ah, um, that is a very mighty blow. He uh, managed to leave part of his defenses open, and you took advantage of it, and you were able to give him a nice cut along his hamstring. Ah. He's breathing heavily. Uh, oh, wait. Hold on. Oh. Uh, that's a crit, actually. Because I hexed him. Ah! Excellent. And also... Oh, jeez. I think I was supposed to be doing some extra damage before. It's a natural 19 that is a crit, right? Because 19 on is... Oh, you're right. You're right. Sorry. Sorry. I wasn't thinking. Never mind. Never mind. Carry on. Uh, he did take an extra two damage, though. Uh, because he's my cursed target. And I forgot about that before, but that's fine. So, 12 damage total. God. All right. Uh, Falkrin. All right. Swinging away. Uh, I'm afraid that is not enough to pierce his armor. Damnation. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my bonus action and burn a healing word for um, Persephone. All right. Excellent. Take that healing. Uh, so that's ten, yeah, so ten you're, points. Wow. Yes, you are ten points 10. of healing. You are still Life prone. Amazing. You, you are still prone, but uh, you can stand and attack on your next turn. 
awesome. Thank you. Praise be to the crime one. He heard the prayer that you just uttered, Falkron, and casts his gaze upon you. Save for wisdom. The blood in you begins to rise. You hear a rushing in your ears and all you see is red and you hear the cackle of the god ball in your ears. You're stuck. At, at, least, at least she's used to suffering. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he turns to you, Doran, and attacks with both of his daggers. Hitting AC 21 and AC 17. Uh, one hits. All right, which one? The 21? Uh, 21 hits, yep. All right. And then I'm going to use my reaction to uh, do a hellish rebuke. All right. Uh, you just took 14 points of piercing damage. Uh And your hellish rebuke, wow! I need you to describe this, Doran. <laughs> um, I think That's a lot of damage. I, th I think for Doran, uh, again, it's it's about the sword. So it's not as much fire as it is um, almost like a rust cloud, like sand, being sandblasted uh, hey. when, he, when he hits me. So he slashes you across the cheek going deep into your chin and across your Adam's apple. And you feel the sword vibrate with rage and a blast of uh, rust and steam and the sound of metal being quenched in uh, water just shoots out from the blade and covers him. He screams in pain. That'll do. Next, we have Persephone. Welcome back. Awesome. Okay. Um, can I... I can reach him from here, yeah? Even yes. It's diagonal. Um, right. you, are, you are prone, though. You'll need to stand up. And that's just my movement, right? That's half your movement, yes. Great. So I'm just going to go right at a stand up and kind of go right at him with my... Rapier? You are uh, get a plus one to that because you are flanking with Doran, but ah. it is not enough. And then coming right at him with my dagger too. That is a hit. Nice. Persephone, as you see Doran being slashed at the steam enveloping your enemy, you stand quietly. You can't quite get your footing, and you swing wildly with your rapier, but then you see your opening, and you drive your dagger home. Final blow is yours. Yay! Oh. Um, all right, so I, uh, you know, swing wildly with that dagger, and, or with the rapier, but when the dagger hits home, I, I'm surprised for a moment that I, that I can feel that it hit, and then I just take all of my energy and drive it all the way through into the up to the hilt. He reaches, he drops his daggers and tries to reach back. His hand finds your hand and he squeezes. But then the squeezing becomes weaker and weaker. It falls limp and he falls forward on top of the recline the uh, prone form of Mortlock and just slides right off your blade. And that is it. Huzzah! <laughs> well done. Uh, while we're still somewhat engaged, uh, I'm going to finish the job on that Statue of Bane. As you stand there, you need to make a con uh, charisma save.
What's the save? Uh, charisma. I'd actually like to move up and uh, hit the other statue as well. Which statue? Uh, the one to the north. Let's see the <laughs> one to the north. I guess I don't finish the job on the statue. As you uh-huh. come forward to knock the statue from its pedestal, you hear a voice in your head. Kneel before the might of the god of conquest. And you try to steal yourself, but you can't help but fall to your knees. Let me see. Right, so the statue that you are standing in front of Falkron is the statue of Ball. He's wearing a Harlequin mask, and he's got a uh, dagger behind his back. Mm-hmm. And he barks at you. <laughs> um, before, before he does that, I cast Bardic Inspiration... On, or uh, before she does that, I would cast Bardic Inspiration on Falkron. All right. What form I, does your Bardic Inspiration take? Um, I believe she sings Sledgehammer. <laughs> I, I, uh, uh, I have warning, these statues will get into your head, but not with the crying god on your side. Nice. Uh, what do you wish to do, Falkron? I'm going to take a warhammer to that statue, as these are vain, evil gods. Roll an attack. Oh. Um, Add the d6. Where's the d6? Yeah. Yeah. Roll the d6 for that part of inspiration, if you wish. That is enough! The hammer crashes into... The statue doing <laughs> how much damage? Eleven, either way. Doing eleven points of damage. You have cracked it. It is barely standing. You're able to knock it over if you wish. Most definitely. All right. It it is affixed to the pedestal um, with uh, various screws and um, uh, masonry uh, bolts, but you're able to rest it free with the crack, and you rip it from the uh, pedestal and throw it to the ground. I turn to the group and go, ah! and that's when I see uh, Silas on his knees and like, oh! Silas, this is something that you would have to say for at the end of each of your turns, so we'll say that after a few seconds of Falcon doing this, you can make another save. I will go ahead and take another, uh, I'll take a push at the center statue. I want to, with the goal to push it over. All right, so you come and stand next to it, and you need to make a Christmas save. Silas, you are able to snap out of the uh, effects. Uh, and Rim, you are able to throw off the effects easily. And that's, uh, what is that, athletics or strength, straight strength check? Um, if you want to push it over, uh, it will yes. be athletics. Athletics. Uh, that is more than enough. You are able to push it, and with the damage that Silas has already done, there's a cracking, and it gives way and falls to the ground. Now, you had mentioned, DM, that when I first hit it, the spear seemed to be a real spear held in a wooden statue, yes? Indeed. Um... Is it a plain-looking spear? Is it bejeweled? Is it glowing? Is it anything? Um, As far as you can tell, it is a normal spear. It doesn't look like it's seen much use, um, but it is not rusted. It is not bejeweled. Um, It looks like a serviceable spear. Um, I'm going to pick it up. Okay. You are holding a spear. Thank you. You're welcome. If we're gonna if we're gonna be lawful stupid, and I'm playing a paladin, I might as well get into the spirit of things. (laughs) 
And I'll go ahead and try to push the last one down since we are uh, finishing. Come to here. Uh, roll that strength. Uh, athletics, sorry. You put your hands on, onto the statue and push, but it seems to push back. And you look into the eyes and you hear the sound of exhalation. Coldness creeps up your hand, up your wrists. You can't let go of the statue. It reaches your elbows, your shoulders, and finally your heart. You have been cursed by the god of death. You can no longer receive magical healing. That is a problem. Statue is still standing. You see a rim gasp and then finally rip his hands away from the statue, shivering. It's hard to tell with the Dragonborn, but he does not look well. I'm going to run over and uh, attempt to hit the statue with my hammer. All right, roll your attack. Well, you were able to hit it. It cracks. And you stand there feeling triumphant. But then your eyes are drawn to the skull grinning. And it seems to move. And you hear. Coldness settles upon you. And you, too, have been cursed by the god of the dead. You cannot take benefit from magical healing. When I have a moment, I'm going to attack that last statue with reach. All right. I'm not... You have, <laughs> you have okay. a moment. I will just finish the job since I'm already cursed. <laughs> Uh, so who's doing that? So si okay, so Silas, you make your attack if that is what you want to do, unless somebody stops him. I'm gonna attempt to like I'm gonna attempt to parry it or like knock the blade out of the way and say like don't. All right, that will say that is what happens. Falcon and then as keeps I keeps you from doing it, Silas. And as I as I knock his blade away, I then turn and like throw a backhand back at the statue. Right, roll attack. With that, you're able to crack the skull. And it topples off of the pedestal. We still feel that coldness, though. That does not lift. It does not. It's not as bad as it was, but you are still cursed. So, you have the body of this man that Persephone has slain, with all of your help. You have the resting form of Mortlock Van Tempore. And Could you I... have three desecrated statues. Yes, Typhon? Could I check up on um, Mort... Uh, uh, did he introduce himself? He did. Mortlock Van Tempore. Mortlock, and um, see if I can bring him to consciousness, and we'll slap on the cheek or whatever, try and draw him uh, back. To... Do you have the means to bestow one point of healing? I do not. Then I'm afraid you are not going to be able to revive him until he has rested long enough to regain hit point naturally. Unless somebody has the means to bring him to one hit point. I would take that as a no. Well, I, 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 we, it can be done. Um, 
Um, well, uh, let me put it to you this way. Uh, we could end tonight and spend this last hour talking to Jade, asking questions. Um, or we could say that you're going to do a little more exploring um, with the understanding that you probably need to find a place to put Mortlock while he recovers. I mean, I, I can heal him. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm prepared to, if we continue. I'd like to continue, at least. See if it's, we can knock right, out this let's, let's keep going. mission. So, uh, the challenge here, I'll let everyone know, uh, I'm going to raise him up, but this will be the end of any helpful divine energy which I have. Would it be wiser to use my healing potion that I could always just... All right, Silas, you cast Cure Wounds. The goddess of Andrea Gilmadreth, her power descends upon you, passes through your arms, and Mortlock seems to glow for a moment and then takes a deep breath and opens his eyes. Is he dead? He's practically Look to on your top right, of friend. Uh, oh, comfortable friar, where is my Romeo? <laughs> oh, he sits up and he tosses the body of the man off of him. I never thought I'd see a day when the flaming fist amounted to anything but a pile of shit. It's well, I'm in your debt. To be fair, most of them aren't usually in the flaming fist. Some of us even really don't like the flaming fist. Present company excluded. <sighs> he stands up, stretches, looks at his wounds. You're a hardy lot. Well, a man of my word. I surrender. I'll help you any way I can. But there are certain things <laughs> even I am unable to do. What do you want to know? Well, first of all, what's behind this curtain? I just point over to the what looks like a curtain. It is a curtain. It says I uh, had some some crates in there, just goods, things that the cultists have stolen from their victims. My lord. Would you happen to be one of the Van Thampours, as it were? That's right. Mortlock Van Thampour. Son of Thadamara. That's correct. Then, how did you happen to be down in this place, surrounded by cultists of the Dead Three? Why don't we wait a moment for Tess to come back? It's an important exposition here. I don't want to have to repeat myself. Ah, well, while that's happening, um, I uh, lift up the body of this dead assassin and raise one eyebrow at Typhon, certain that I've somehow beaten him to something, and check the body for any notable possessions or items. He has two daggers that appear to be perfectly normal. Those are his only possessions. And I also examine his head, which had appeared to be a skull, but perhaps not. Is he in it's, fact Ghost Rider? 
He is, in fact, Ghost Rider. His head is a human skull. It's not an illusion, then. Sincere apologies. It's all right. Is there it anything is else? Di- Sorry. Is not an illusion. Is there anything else demonic or otherwise aberrant about him? Um, you see a few tattoos. Um, they all have similar connotations. Um, death skulls. Body hey, modification, hey, hey. guys. Ta- Don't ta- do it. Tattoo acceptance for the workplace. Come on now. <laughs> um, but yes, other than that, that appears to be all about him that he is demonic or off-putting. So, your question. My mother. Yes. One of the three remaining members of the Council of Four. We've, uh, we've been paying the dead three cultists to murder people in the city. I think that warrants a bit more explanation. Hmm. I could see why you did that. It's my mother's idea. She wants to take control of the city. Now that uh, Grand Duke is gone, which she was also a part of, she thinks that by discrediting the Flaming Fist, she can show that they are nothing more than what they really are, which is a group of bullies, mercenaries, with them destabilized shouldn't be anything in her way of becoming the next Grand Duke. Can I ask what did happen to the Grand Duke? He went to Elturel. My mother was instrumental in convincing him to go. Lots of bad blood between Bob and Elturel. Oh. She was able to convince Grand Duke that the time was right. Try some sort of diplomatic thing or other. Not really sure. But she arranged a meeting between him and the leader of Elturel, a man named Thavius Krieg. And, well, the plan was for him to be in the city when it fell seems to work. And so where does that leave you? Why were you attacked by the fiends that your family has hired to sow chaos into the city? He scouts betrayed. <sighs> my mother doesn't think very highly of me, nor do my brothers. They sent me here to check on things. Everything seemed to be fine. I came back here with Vaz there. And, and them cultists out there and him. They surprised me. Sought them out. And Vaz, he's a tough customer. I can I'd have died if it weren't for you lot. You have my thanks. And my cooperation. What was in it for them to betray you? Sure, my mother and her brothers put her up to it. Not sure if it was her or <laughs> either of my brothers. They've always hated me. Are they involved in all of this as well, your two brothers? Yeah. Mom calls the shots. The sons do what we're told. But that doesn't include getting my throat cut just for doing what I'm told. Well, we can certainly vouch that you've been valiant, if not heroic, with us here in the old bones of Baldur's Gate. 
However, as Doran mentioned, there are curtains we have yet to peek behind. <laughs> Let us move. You want to be careful about which curtains you poke behind down here. What makes you say that? Come now, it's in all the best plays. You don't hide behind curtains. You don't sneak up on them. Well... I do know that there's this one curtain, what do they call it? A tapestry, that's right. It's uh, on the other side of this place. I wouldn't touch it if I were you. It's not near here, though. Other end. Well, man, now is not the time to beat around things. What What are you saying? Oh, oh I don't know much about this sort of thing, but... Uh, well, when I first came down here, they told me not to touch it, so now I'm telling you not to touch it. How would we recognize this curtain of certain death? Um, it's yellow. <laughs> Brilliant. I just, I sigh, and then I just move this curtain behind me to see what's behind it. Much as he described, it appears to be a storeroom. There are several rats that are squeaking around. They look up as you open the door, or as you move the curtain, and you see their little red eyes, and some of them scurry away, but others are too busy eating and doing the things that rats do. There are nine crates. Hey. Look over at the others. Well, shall we at least clear out this bit here and make sure there's not going to be anyone behind us as we discuss? Certainly. Sounds wise. They start walking in. Right. Anything on the crates that would suggest items of value or particular use? Just kind of take a quick look through them. Um, they don't seem to be marked by anything, but as you open each one and look, they're all, they all look like at one point they were hammered shut, but uh, the nails have been removed. Um, six of them are empty, and there's some packing straw, but they are otherwise empty. And the other three contain goods. Um, you find ten days' worth of rations, a bag of 20 caltrops, three flasks of something um, in black, three black flasks and something that are uh, have tightly stoppered, um, six sets of manacles, four tinder boxes, nine daggers, and four uh, vials of red liquid, which uh, appear to be healing potions. Oh. It almost would, seems to be a playground like, for the night surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about the daggers or the potions? Uh, certainly the manacles. Like, uh, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. I'm actually going to grab another set of manacles. Oh, there you go. <laughs> what? I, so obviously we'll take the potions, but grab also two. the black... The black vials mm -hmm. um, I, this looks interesting as well. Um, Any way to examine have, or determine the content? Is anybody here proficient in alchemist's tools? I am. Ah, well, you look at these uh, bottles and you see they've been painted black, um, which could uh, be a variety. There's a variety of compounds um, which uh, degrade when light is when they're exposed to light over a period of time. Um, some of them are very rare, 
which you think is kind of unlikely to find in such a place. But there is one that is quite common, Alchemist's Fire. Ah. Is that a certainty or a best guess? Do That's a best guess, maybe? but you feel pretty good about that. Okay. Um, you could unstopper one of them, and if you were careful enough, you would be able to tell for sure by the smell. I will do that. Hmm. Let's see. Um, use your alchemist. Yeah, use your alchemist skills uh, tool set and uh, make a dex. Uh, make it a dexterity check. This is using dexterity plus your expertise in alchemy. Okay. Um, doo -doo -doo. It's not really a good way to roll this. Uh, I have the same modifier on investigation, so just. Okay. Hmm. Well, the DC was 10. To just unstop a vial and well, look they're, they're very heavily stopped. They're like uh, with wax and stuff like that. Um, okay. I, so I mean, you, you attempt I, I feel like that's a little bit of information that's like struggling to break one open as opposed to just like checking. No, ex ex that's fine. Exactly. No, no it's you're, you're... Hmm. Let's see. You, there is a way to do this in which the bottle can then be restoppered and still be usable. And you realize as you are starting to open it that you have made a mistake. And if you continue, you will not be able to reuse the stopper once it's been pulled. So you leave it in place. Fair enough. I will stash it in my belt and pretend like nothing happened. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is Typhon done. Anybody else? Dorn, you are standing in front of a door. Yeah. Can't hear anything on the other side. Make a perception check. You can hear nothing on the other side of this door. I... I just opened the door. Inside you see a large wooden crate and then steps leading down into the water. All right. I'm just going to head back around. Okay. <laughs> Anybody want to check that trick crate? I'm sure that someone will. There's also a room full of chests that we have to look at. Quickly. Sure. All right, this uh, crate seems to have been in storage for torches. There are only six left. Torches and puppies. <laughs> you uh, walk back down into the water. There are only two puppies left. <laughs> in this room... Mortlock's kind of been keeping an eye on you all as you do this, and as you walk into there. I'm keeping an eye on him. Keeping an eye on us. <laughs> he slowly walks down, leaning on his uh, great club. Oh, you because found he doesn't it. know that we know that we know. All right, so you found it there. What did we find? Pretty sure that's some treasure that my mother used to pay these cultists. Not quite sure where she got it. Well, then if she paid them, then it was money gone from her. Who knows what good it could do. Certainly it's going to have to be confiscated. Uh, the dead three cultists, they, um, they usually receive a regular payment from my brother. Uh, Amric. He runs a money lending business. You can find him sometimes in the Low Lantern Tavern. My mother doesn't care for me, but he thinks Amric's just the best. He's always been her favorite. Does somebody who is good at that sort of thing want to check that these are all safe to open? Uh, 
Um, sure. I'm not good at necessarily opening them, but I have an eye for traps at least. That's more what I mean. May I check them for traps? You may make an investigation check. Is it possible for me to have helped since I came are up you, with the idea? Are you proficient in investigation? Oh, uh... So I have um, jack-of-all-trades, which makes me... Somewhat like, proficient. Hmm. Yes, in everything, so I'm I don't know sure, how you... I'm not sure if jack-of-all-trades allows you to give help like that, but I'll say sure. But it's a moot point, as in the, this investigation check is enough. This does not appear to be trapped, Typhon. Excellent. Uh, I open up the one that's closest to me. It is, however, locked. Now you can see on the side of the of the uh, chest there is a large padlock, and the chest is well. Could I try to break the padlock? Um, you could attempt, yes. Um, it's just a strip check. So you will need a tool of some sort or a weapon. I was going to offer her my hammer or assistance in breaking that lock. I was going to use my dagger since we just found a whole bunch, and if I break it, I can just replace it. All right. Um, the dagger is not going to be able to substitute for thieves tools um, you could potentially it is a metal implement you could jam it into the lock and try to pry it off of the oh, yeah. chest I'm not trying to do thieves uh, okay. work I'm just trying to like brute force open All it right. uh, that, will, that, that is a metal object you can attempt to do it um, roll a athletics check I think actually this is just before, we just said straight strength with um, breaking of manacles yeah. and stuff. So mm -hmm. we'll say that again. Straight the strength. barbarian lockpick. Indeed. Mm. That's a strength save. Make sure you oh. do the strength check. Thank you. Wow! Nice. It's 70. <laughs> you make a noise very similar to that as you are able noise. to snap the lock off of this chest. Excellent. So there are four chests total. You have managed to unlock one of them. You open it and it is filled with money. Just looks like thousands of copper pieces. Two red crystal vials with gold stoppers. And they look like the healing potions from the other? They do not. Ah. Uh, I hand them over to Silas and say, recognize these? Or, I'm right next to you, Typhon. Or, did you mean Typhon or Silas? I'm sorry. Well, who had the, um, who had the, uh, alchemy? Proficiency. That was me, Typhon. Typhon. Oh, okay. Typhon, then. Would you like me to make a check, or...? Yes. Uh, this will be to, to determine the type of uh, potion these are will be a alchemist's tool check with um, intelligence. Okay. Um, all just, this will appear as arcana, but it's the same modifier. Okay. Mm. You're I not don't sure know why are. that rolled with disadvantage. That's very strange. No, either of them were, unfortunately, not enough for you to determine what these potions are. Red potions, uh, a brighter red than healing potions, and gold stoppers. The gold stoppers alone are probably worth something. I will have to take another look at these another time. Um, the moment there that counts. Identity. Three other chests, each of them with locks, similar to this one. I will um, step in an attempt to break another. I'm sure that with this group, at some point, we'd be able to unlock all of them. That's a good point. With no threat, everyone will just keep trying until finally they're all broken, especially with that. <laughs> uh, 
Rim comes in and he breaks that one without any trouble. Um, taking the time to rest in between each breakage, make sure his hands are nice and uh, uh, dry. dry. He's able to break all four of the locks. In chest number two, it appears to be filled with hundreds upon hundreds of silver pieces. Um, also, it seems to contain ten gems. These are eye agates. Chest number three contains a very delicate porcelain mask in the shape of a dragon. And it's resting on another bed of thousands of copper pieces and hundreds of silver pieces. Thousands of pesos. Chest. Chest number four contains a bronze crown with five spires. Each spire is shaped and painted to resemble one of the five kinds of chromatic dragons. Black, blue, green, red, and white. Does anybody take the time to count the coins? Well, if uh, if we rest here for a time, I'd happily count them. But it will take a while. I'm certain that you have uh, many accountants in your bureaucracy which can back you up on this, but perhaps for the moment we'll just take any dangerous items and move along, move along. Is it, is it safe to come out? Of course. Yes, dear. Was she not tagging along with us before? I assume she, she was, was keeping as about... Soon as as soon as you guys went into battle with um, with uh, the cultists, she stayed behind that corner and um, was so good at it that you know not even the DM was looking at her. <laughs> I, I, I was aware of her presence. She never left the board. But I assume good. that she's not strong enough to lug around chests full of coins. So... Indeed. The, um, the chests are heavy. The first one weighs 70 pounds with everything inside. The second one weighs 37, with everything inside. The third weighs 55, and the fourth weighs... Hmm. Not that much. Two and a half pounds. Now perhaps we could just... That's the one that contains the crown. Perhaps we could just take the crown, the mask, the vials, things of that nature, and... and move, move along. That seems wise. All right, so who is taking what? I'll take the vials. Mm -hmm. It seems perhaps that... we should distribute these healing potions I found as well. Um, I would um, like one if, if possible. I will pass one to him. It would seem that with a crown of dragons and our very own adventurer the blood of dragons, perhaps Rim, would you be so kind as to carry this important looking artifact? I will take a health potion and then also the porcelain mask as well. It, I will hold it, but from what I know of these covers, this is not a good artifact. What is your plan? We're going to flush out the rest of this hole. Well, there, there is one more uh, door right over here. Oh, um, uh, don't open that one. No, do recall, there are several doors which we did not go to. There was a room. Perhaps our friend here can elaborate for us. There was a room with doors marked with each of the dead three. We chose the door marked with Bane. What can you tell us about those other two doors? And this one as well that we should not go through. That door's got skeletons behind it. They were raised by the leader of the 
cultists that follow Merkel down here. Can't remember her name at the top of my head. But she's a gruesome woman, and she she should be messed with. I. So to get here, uh, first off, is he telling the truth? Uh, about what? About the room full of skeletons. We shouldn't go in. Is he really trying to just protect us? Um, roll an uh, insight check. Fourteen. Um, he appears to be telling the truth, as far as you could tell. Mm. I'm loath to just leave undead. Again, I'm certain that Doran here will be able to send his com his uh, company of flaming fists, but undead was roaming around. I too, at the mention of undead, are like mm, unnatural. Well, you, of course, are free to do what you want. Oh, and I'm certain since we saved I... your life, you'll back us up. Let's go. Well, wait, wait, wait a minute. I'm talking about after this. What's your plan? Because by doing this, you're setting yourself up as opposed to my mother. That's not something that should be taken. In. Seeing as we've already been somewhat unwillingly made members of the Flaming Fist, we already were technically against your mother. Is it any and different? Seeing as how we prevented her plan to murder you, I'd say we definitely have gone against her. Well, that's true, but my oldest brother, Thirstwell, he uses imps as spies. He's got them all over the town. Sees everything. He knows you're here, I'm sure of it. And what he knows, my mother knows. Yeah, then he probably knows that if you're still alive, then you're going to be implicated as working with us. Congratulations. <laughs> That's right. And I'm on the first boat out of here. Oh, yes, I'm sure Certainly. That someone who has imps around the city won't have any control over the docks of Baldur's Gate. I might die trying to get out, but there's nothing for me here now, and they're not going to leave me alive. Well, Seeing as how we've saved your life twice this day, it would be good to pay that forward and help us deal with those who are dead, but not make a persuasion check uh, uh, can he make it with advantage since uh, the paladin and the cleric are obviously trying to convince him together sure well I did say I'd help you uh, but I I mean I'm barely standing myself appreciate everything you've done and I'll pay you by answering any questions you might have but tell us about the other two doors the ones marked with the other members of the dead three Merkel and, ba and Ball tell us where those doors lead other than a mm. yellow curtain what are we going to find mm. scratches his head and says I don't know, let me let me try and picture it mm. Well, if you came this way, you must have passed the Altar of Bane. We did. Did you see a fellow there with a big helmet? Oh yes, we killed everyone in the room. Oh. Well, good for you. Hmm. He scratches his chin and looks back towards the room where you've come from. With Vaz dead, and with the Iron Council dead, you really only have one leader of the cultists left. I, I, I can't 
know things for certain, but with two of her number gone, I expect after a week or so, this cold will dry up. You so you're ask, you're my, saying we should just leave the third leader? Assuming well, that. you I mean, if you really want to finish the job, then yeah, you have to take her out. But she's she's tough. If we were to need to rest to recuperate ourselves, is there a secure location in this place where that could be done? Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple. Um, but they might be occupied. How likely is it someone's going to come down these hallways? This woman that you mentioned, perhaps? Looking for Buckethead oh, yeah. or Murder Bees she, here. She mostly stays on her side, but I suppose it's possible. How long you fixing to rest? Mm. I just have this strange feeling like we're in we're in the catacombs patrolled and manned by these cultists. There have been zombies, he tells us there's more undead sitting in one place for say an hour it would seem likely that someone would stumble upon us which could be unpleasant well like i said there are places that you could go where probably would be disturbed in point of fact that room that's got skeletons in it nobody opens that room because there's skeletons in it <laughs> if you you open the door, you fight the skeletons. You'll probably be pretty safe there. They'll come walking around here, maybe. See everybody dead. But we'll be happy. But I still don't think they'll open that door. Well, we're going to open the door either way. Good luck. Shall we? He sits down. Let's. Sounds good to me. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just go over here. Um, I'm sorry, she's got the wrong voice. I'll, I'll just go over here. <laughs> well, since we know there's uh, skeletons in there, I, I suppose we can just fight them one by one as they come. Let's just rush in and get some. Strike first. Strike hard. Let's go. Silas, Silas, there's a way in which we should handle these. Let them funnel out. I say we can definitely take care of them, but we also need to take care of ourselves. They're skeletons. Sure I have taken uh, I'll step back. I've taken some hits from that from those daggers, so I'd prefer not being on the front lines this time. I will happily take the front. Rim, can uh, Rim, can you go ahead and give me some support behind me? Some arrows? Of course. Uh, DM question. If, yes. if I'm right here where I'm at, and they come into this space, can I attack them? Yes. Okay. Ready? Who's opening the door? Looks like Falkrin's going to open the door and then step back. <laughs> I think so. Falkrun is going to open the door and then step back. All right, well, hmm. as soon as you open the door, I'm going to go ahead and tell you this. As soon as you open the door, if there's an enemy there that sees you, that will be the beginning of initiative. So you're welcome to step Huzzah. back, but it will depend on what the initiative is and all that, whether mm -hmm. or not you get an attack of opportunity, that sort of thing. Ready? Absolutely. <laughs> That's All right. right. Go get him. Go <laughs> just, just for the record here, I, I, I hope nobody. Nothing at the mouth. I, I hope nobody here is an animal hater, but I, I love the dogs barking. I think it's great. So please, just leave too. the mic open. <laughs> barking inspiration. Barking inspiration. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> She's barking mad. All right. Oh. 
All right, friends. Roll that initiative, please. I just noticed right. that Typhon has plus six on initiative. That's hilarious. I do. I still rolled really low. <laughs> it looks like we got everybody, correct? Mm-hmm. Hey! I'm proud of myself. We're all proud of you too, Sean. You're oh, a good boy. Thank you. Thank You're you. a good boy. Yes, you are. <laughs> He's gonna hate me for days for that. <laughs> okay. Let's get this ordered correctly and we will begin. Rin, you are first for the 23. I do have a line of sight to this one in the corner, right? Yes, it has partial cover because of the corner of the door there. That means his AC is a little higher. And I'm afraid that is not enough. Do you wish to move? No, I'm going to stay put. All right, you are done. Persephone. Ready an action with my uh, crossbow, uh, assuming that Falcron's going to stick to her plan. So as soon as uh, an enemy crosses through the um, door. Got it. Your action is readied. Thank you. Next we have the skeletons. Is this considered a surprise round? Um, no. Uh, the door was opened and they saw the door open and they attack. Uh, for Stephanie, that was your turn. So Falkrin, it is your turn. Excuse me. All right. You you did say it was the skeleton's turn, Sean. I did. That... I meant to say it's Falcon's turn. Okay. You, well... you go on 19, the skeletons go on 13. Easily, easily get the two confused. All right. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take the disengage, and I'm going to back up and then tuck myself into that corner. Now the skeletons go. Not blood. The red skeleton steps out, steps to there. Does that trigger the held action? As long as I can see them, yes. Well, you can see him. That's not the most optimal place for attack. He does have a little bit of cover. Wait, does he? No, he doesn't. No, it's it's the, the he, point of the corner, right? So, Yeah, the point of the corner. He does not have cover. So you were able to attack him. Awesome. Roll that damage. Or roll that attack, I should say. So... Uh, apologies. I I have a crossbow, but I don't see it in my actions. Do you have the crossbow uh, equipped? Yeah, you may need to go into your equipment and just equip it. There's a little checkbox. Thank you. Okay. 14 is a hit. Nice. Seven points of piercing damage. Bone fragments chip off of it, and each ribcage is rattled by your attack. Good. He continues his movement to here and attacks Falkran because that was the first one he saw. Mm -hmm. Using a short sword, hitting AC 18. I believe that pings off your armor. Is it not? No, so that is my your armor. Eight. Yeah, my armor is 18. So yes, uh, you take six yes. points of piercing damage. Six points of piercing damage as the point of this sword finds its mark. That is that skeleton's turn. Blue skeleton moves to there. And attacks Doran. Hitting AC 22, doing four points of piercing damage. 
He's also wearing a short sword. These uh, skeletons are all armored haphazardly, uh, bits and pieces of leather, studded leather, and here and there a uh, few scraps of chainmail. This oh, skeleton wait. moves <laughs> to you. You my guy died before. Just oh, take that healing. I'm golden. Put me <laughs> on the front line. What did you roll? Well, no, I think it's just a straight six. Oh, straight is. six. Oh, great. Um, so they have moved there. They have attacked. They're done. Typhon. Very good. Um, Chainmail is advantageous, and I will reach out and cast Shocking Grasp at advantage. Ah, an advantage indeed. Aha! Excellent. Ooh. <laughs> However, that is... Uh, I'm assuming you're doing this on the red skeleton? That's the only one I have uh, reach for, so yes. So four damage. Oh! It shakes as electricity passes through it, activating some remnants of nerves. But it is still standing. Silas. It's not going to be standing anymore. I'm going to attack it. And yes, I'm sorry. I skipped your move, Typhon. I'm just uh, running did, over there. Yeah, You did not incur an attack of opportunity because it's lost its reaction. Roll your attack, Silas. Twenty-four. That is a hit. Seven points. This skeleton is crushed. Off to the GM lair with you. Indeed. Red one that's, has been downed. That strange mythical place known as the GM screen. All right, Doran. All right, I will go for a green flame blade on the one right next to me there. Um, there we go. 24 to hit for 7 damage. That is a hit. Blue. And then green there takes uh, 4 fire damage. Alright. Nice. Excellent. That is the end of Doran's turn, unless you wish to move. Nope, I'm good. Back to the top of the order. Rim. Stepping forward to take a shot at Nice. That is a hit. With 11 piercing. Again, the pointed tip of your arrow, who doesn't seem to be doing that much damage, but you hit it right through the spinal column, and the head dodders around for a second and falls off. And then soon oh. the, re the rest of the uh, skeleton follows. Next, Next, we have Persephone. I'm going to ready in action again, uh, waiting for the next skeleton to sh show up right in that uh, square and hit him with a crossbow. Excellent. Falkrin. I will also ready in action and be prepped to bring my war hammer down on the next skeleton to step up. Bringing the hammer down. Well, it is the skeleton's turn next. So, Persephone, take your held action. All right. That is a hit. That just hits his armor. Oh, wait. Oh, no, that, sorry. I yeah. was looking at Rin. Rats. Uh, that is not. It passes right through his ribcage and clatters against the wall behind him. Now, Falkrin, take your held action, please. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm That is a hit. Uh, roll double damage, please. Nice. So it's 11 plus whatever, or just roll a D for whatever your, we'll just roll your um, attack. Whatever the D8. Yeah. Well, I mean, Real D8. All right. No, no, we'll click on, click on the damage for your hammer because we'll, 
Okay, I find four. That will work. Uh, so a total of 15 on Mr. Green. It is crushed into white powder. <laughs> well done. Mm. Nope, the uh, skeleton has just disappeared from the turnover, but they go after Falkron. We're back up to, we're back down to Typhon. Okay, I will step forward, um, do the same thing here. Seven points this time? Assuming the 15. 15 did hit. And he did seven points of damage. Again, it shakes as the arcing electricity moves from metal point to metal point on its armor. All done. Next, we have Silas. Going to attack him with my glaive at range. Yay. Hooray. Eighteen hits. Eighteen to hit six damage. Do you have anything interesting to say about how the skeleton falls? Uh, with a mighty lunge, Silas plunges his very keenly sharp glaive directly through the mouth of the skeleton with a deft twist another skeleton's head is popped off when the body very crumbles nice. I love it great job thank you for that Silas the final skeleton is dispatched May I try and recover some of my bolts? You may. Did I get them all? Let's see. It's a percentage roll. Percentage roll. So roll percentile. You have a 50% chance. Um, so if you roll 49 or lower, you are recovering. You can recover them. If you roll... Uh, 50 or higher, you cannot. Wait, no, 50 or lower. Yeah, got it. I do um, math. That's, and Rim is doing the same. So, so roll a D100, and you can roll four, yes, like two you. D100, however many shots you took. Yes. You took two okay. shots, correct? Uh, this battle? Yes. Alright. Oh, you do it so, every time. Okay. Yeah, Persephone, the... Uh, the bolt Wait. that passed uh, through the skeleton broke. Rim, okay. you were able to recover one of your arrows. Uh, the other one is broken. So that's one recovered for Rim and one more for you, Persephone. Cool. Did you roll? Oh, I rolled two. I rolled an 11 rolled and an 8. Seven. 11 and 8. Ah, great. So, so I you, got one you back. You got one right? back, but not the other one. Yes. Great. Cool. Good job. Rim, you also got one back, but not the other. Thank you. Not a problem. Are we done with battle? Yes, we are. This, Indeed. This room is clear. Um, this uh, far wall here is appears to be a passage that at one time might have continued to a different part of this dungeon, but it is completely crumbled and caved in. Back we go. Let's collect this miscreant and this uh, wounded lady and move along. The only other option that there is at this moment is to take four hours rest and recover some Ability to cast spells if we're coming up against somebody perhaps even harder than the last two that we fought. 
And I believe the purpose of clearing this room was to give us a place of respite. I don't think s- sleeping for an entire eight hours would be advisable, though. Sean, does it have to be eight, or can it be just four? Uh, you have two choices, a short rest, which is an hour, or a long rest, which is eight. Oh, okay. So it can't be, like, in the middle. Okay, so eight hours is a lot in a sewer. <laughs> I, for one, would benefit greatly from just a, a short bit of rest. Agreed. As would our, as would our newfound allies, I think. That's true. Uh, I, I would That's... certainly appreciate a rest. Yeah, I could have do, an accord. We could do with a bit of a breather. I mean... Perhaps we should shut this door. The sound of it opening seems to be quite loud, and we'll be alerted to anyone coming this direction, since there's only one entrance to this area. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, you know what? I don't think everyone knows about that either, so it's another bit of protection for you. I will, uh, right. I will close the secret door as I'm waiting for the, the rescued woman and the brute to make their way into the room. And they do so. The door closes with a scraping sound. All Even those you... born among the stone might happen to miss it upon passing by, so I'm told. <laughs> You're just gonna take that? Oh, I missed it. It's, it's, oh, uh, he, 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 he oh, just disparaged just, your people. Just basically said that you're not really a dwarf at all. If you, oh, you, you appear. You well, appear to. You dwarf. appear to secretly be a gnome or a halfling or something masquerading uh, as a dwarf. Well, <laughs> well, take minds. The dwarves take no heed of rats. Well, or secret doors, apparently. But we'll leave it at that. <laughs> All I'm, right. I'm, I'm sorry, who pushed it open? I believe I found it eventually. <laughs> Tried to get hands on it, you know? That's um, what she said. Is, <gasps> this is a very safe place, as far as you can tell. However, it's not completely safe. So, um, is there anybody who does not need a rest? I have full hit points. I'm just cursed. So I could stand. I could take the yeah. So that would mitigate the uh, the risk of doing a short rest in a dungeon greatly. So if most of you wish to do a short rest while Rim stands guard for an hour, uh, right there, exactly, um, then a short rest you may have. I can also stand I- with Rim. I, I gain no benefit from a short rest, and I'm not damaged enough to call a hit die, so I'll be alert with Rim. All right. Could I resummon a familiar? Yes, uh, mark off the um, components, the cost of the various things. Uh, is this incense, right? Burning of incense. incense. And charcoal. Mm, incense and charcoal. Mm. Probably still too stinky down here to really make a difference. This will be an owl again? Um, I suppose. Owl. <laughs> the owl name talk. Um, is there a hit die button on the D&D Beyond sheet, or do you just roll it in roll 20? Um, there's... What color owl would you like? Purple. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, there's uh, a, the, sh- uh, the short. Uh, your a choices. Dark, the a short dark, rest uh, a black, short. dark, dark colored. Uh, the, uh, yeah. the, short, the, the short rest button at the top of the character sheet. There's like an anvil campaign long rest, short rest. Mm. I'll find mm. it eventually. Oh yes. Will it that work for you? Uh... Short rest, cool. 
the iPhone? Yes, that's fine. You'll be able to see that all right? It's very tiny. It is. I could send you a token to to actually have a token, if that's easier to do. I mean, a token or not. I mean, I kind of like it not being a token, but it might be easier to see if it was. I do certainly You've got one from last that. week. I do. Um, but I like this. I had a question, um, just housekeeping. Weren't there two people that were cursed? Yes. I was also cursed. This whole place is cursed. <laughs> so cursed. But it's just a it's just magical means that we can't heal ourselves by. So does that Correct. mean um so that, like rest still count do health potions still count? Hmm. You would have to test that out, I think. Okay, okay. Might be uh, dangerous. To use that. All right. Um, I'm going to say that is our night.